New UN data says that concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are accumulating faster than at any time in human existence. The UN's weather monitoring body found that levels had risen by 11% in the past two decades. The concentration of CO2 also rose in 2023. More wildfires and the onset of an El Nino weather event, both adding to fossil fuel emissions. Scientists say the last time these levels were seen was around three to five million years ago when global temperatures were between two to three degrees higher. They also noted some evidence showing that as the world warms, trees aren't able to soak up the same amount of CO2 as they once were. And this finding comes as the UN says that efforts by government to tackle the causes of global warming are wildly off track. Lots to talk about with our environment correspondent Matt McGrath who joins us now. Matt, firstly, big picture, could you explain the situation for us? But starting with what exactly are greenhouse gases and what do they do? We're talking here, Lucy, about the three key greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. They build up in the atmosphere. Some of them are soaked up by trees and by seas, but a lot of them remain in the atmosphere for decades, if not centuries. And they are the main key drivers of warming. What this report shows is that over the last 20 years, as you've been saying, those concentrations have increased to, to a level now not seen in three to five million years. That's quite a, quite, a, quite a thought, really. And what we've also seen in this report is the impacts in 2023 of the other activities that humans are doing as well as heavy ongoing use of fossil fuels. Those activities include the burning of forest fires which are putting up emissions from places like Greece and from Canada and across all parts of the world in that, that particular year. We also saw the onset of El Nino in that year which drove up temperatures and made trees less able perhaps to soak up that carbon and it's worth bearing in mind that the trees and the seas they are our natural allies here. They soak up about half of all the carbon we produce. If there's evidence and the WMO says suggests that parts of the Amazon are not able to soak up carbon anymore that would be a significant uh, a negative effect going forward. Matt, there are climate conferences, COPs conferences, so much attention is put on them. We know that most governments have a national climate plan. What's happening with those? Are countries just not meeting their targets? In, in short, Lucy, not a lot has been happening with them. We had a big bunch of plans produced around the time of COP26 in Glasgow a few years ago. Not an awful lot has changed since then, and that report today from the UN recognises that. Countries are kind of holding their hands, if you like. They're, they're not displaying what they're going to do because they know the next set of plans are due by next spring. And so we expect some big steps forward in that period. That, this is all part, I guess, of the negotiations that goes on around this. Where people are going to Azerbaijan next year, world leaders are next month, next world leaders will be gathering there and a key part of that discussion will be how did they improve these plans because as the UN says basically they're barely reducing any carbon output by 2030 on current as it currently stands when the scientists say we need essentially to cut it in half. So something really radical has to happen Matt if you've got uh, the UN saying that uh, targets and global efforts are wildly off track. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think, you know, to give due to the UN process, we have seen in the last couple of years significant steps, a gr an agreement by everybody to transition away from fossil fuels, a commitment to treble renewable energy by the end of this decade. If both of those things actually happen, then there's a, a fighting chance that those emissions may come down. But the evidence so far is that people are good at the words, not so much at the actions. Matt, thanks so much for joining us. Our environment correspondent there, Matt McGrath.